Hey there guys, welcome. How are you? I'm Yalik. Uh, we're going to be doing a Fat Fingers video today. Actually, I've already done this video once, but it was on my phone, and so the settings are different, and so the noise from the game was completely overwhelming, and you couldn't hear my voice. So we're going to have to try this again. Um, not from my phone. Anyway, hi. We're Fat Fingers. Uh, we are a five-man Boom Beach task force pushing the leaderboard. We have been for quite a while. Currently, we are sitting at number 22 on the leaderboard. Uh, last night, when our when our operation previous operation finished and we collected our force points, we were sitting at number 12. We've been as high as 11 so far as I have seen in this push. Possible have hit number 10. Um, however. Several times during this push, we have set force point highs for this team, which is an old team. This is, you know, a third or fourth time pushing. Uh, I participated in the last one. I didn't before that. Um, but at one point, this task force held the number two leaderboard position in the world. It's never reached number one, although we're trying, but um, reached the number two position. However, even at that point, that team, whoever was on it at that time, did not have as many force points as we held a couple of days ago. We were at 18034, which was a new high uh, from, I think we'd set two or three weeks back, we had set a high again for this task force. So it's harder to push the leaderboard, I think, now than it, than it used to be. The consistency has to be there, and you have to be just better than you used to have to be, I want to say, because... Um, You've got more Zooka levels, yeah, you've got more damage, but also that, that means you just, you can't afford to make a mistake. It's hard to explain what I'm, I'm getting at there, but you can't afford to make a mistake because if you do, you suffer. Anyway, we've had a bunch of days recently that were not mistakes, um, until yesterday, and we stumbled a tiny bit yesterday. Uh, was hoping to come out of yesterday's operation with more than 900 force points. We did not, but that's okay. They, the, the layouts were not the best, and that's not really an excuse because, you know, the whole point of this is that you kill the bases no matter what the layout is, no matter how hard they are. Um, actually, we're going to see a couple of hits there that are, you know, really inventive um, because, you know, they're forced to do, people are forced to do something different by... Uh, the layout of the base. Still, with that said, when you get a base that's a completely new layout, or uh, we're going to see a couple of uh, very different paths here, uh, you know, there's, um, there's always more possibility for error when you're just making stuff up. With all of that said, um, I'm going to take two hits from today's current operation before... I mean, we've got a bunch of operations here. I should have possibly probably get back to this for a second. We've got a bunch of operations here on this log that were fantastic. This 1131 six days ago, that was five blue lines. The one after it, the 941, that was uh, five solos as well. But I just have not had time to you know, pause and make this video up until today. And then, you know, like I said, with my phone. But so unfortunately, we, we missed some uh, really big solo days. Uh, this one was that would have been the third day back to back that we went five blue lines we're gonna watch one of those hits and then i mean pretty much anything above 900 is what we are going for today looking pretty good so i'm just going to choose a selection of hits from all of these operations because going back to like what's that mm, eight eight days ago nine days ago we had 762 and the day before that was bad since then we've been on a great streak so i'm just going to take some of the really good hits from all of that and share uh, starting with today's, so today's operation, I rolled it, and the 298 base was Minotaur, and I didn't love it, but the 262 was complex. Now, I do not like complex, and everybody here knows that. So, I decided that I was boosted, I needed to hit, because I was double dipping, and so it was Minotaur or bust. So I ended up, I don't love Minotaur. Alright, so I usually have only 5 GBE. The GBE is always really tight because you have all these shocks, and I love to miss one of the rocket launchers over here. I'm just extremely good at that. Or if I don't do that, I'll hit all, all the shocks on the rocket launchers, and like, 
do something stupid like miss the flamethrower. So I really prefer bullet when I hit Minotaur, but the problem is Minotaur, the bullet method is really not recommended when there are shock launchers back here or when there are rocket launchers somewhere back here. That's pretty rare. These shock launchers are there more than half the time. When they're not there, great. Go to town. Use the bullet method. Um, he'll take all the fire from over here, and you just need to keep a shock on some things right back here. That's it. And your girl should be fine. But, of course, as you can see, the shock launcher is present. Uh, I decided to use this method anyway because I felt safer doing it. And so I started, probably should start, started to hit a little bit differently. Uh, trying to get some extra GBE up with that boat of bombers on the shore. And in particular, I'm trying to get that mortar dead. That way I don't have to do the typewriter landing thing. This is almost 2 million health. But I figured, you know, with seven boats of Zookas and six damage statues, I should be okay. So you can see that I got the mortar out as I wanted to. And that means I don't have to do the typewriter landing. That's when you start about here, go this way. And then before your girls reach the wall, you have to flare back over here. That creates extra, that costs extra GBE. So farmed up a little extra GBE on the shore with the bombers and saved myself some GBE by removing that mortar. Cleared a couple mines up top, you probably saw that earlier, not really important. So, come hell or high water, we are using the bullet approach here. So, deliberately paused that second smoke a little bit, got bullet exactly where I wanted him, so that was, that was helpful. And then from here the idea is, um, it's just one shock on repeat and critter early, you can see the critters coming out now and I'm going to try to keep critters alive there as long as possible. There's another box coming. Uh, the Zookas are doing great work on that core, but the critters are also disappearing really fast. And the core's dead, and that's great because I was about to be dead myself. <laughs> um, and see, even had a little bit of extra GBE there for that, that smoke. Yeah, the, the shock launchers were next going to fire on those critters, and my, my girls were going to be zapped. So, I don't... I mean, again, not really the recommended way of hitting Minotaur, but I will say, if you're going to do it, do it with a plan, and I did. So, that was the 298, which again, I took because the other guys can handle Complex, and I know it, so I just figured I had to handle Minnow one way or another. And meanwhile, Sven had begun hitting this Complex, which, as much as I hate Complex, this one is so much worse because there's a microwave right in the middle of the standard walk. And so Sven's approach to this, some people would try to shock that on the way by. This is big health, it's like 2.1 million. 2.2 um, million? 2.1. So Sven's approach was not to try to dance with the microwave or shock it on the way by or whatever. Complex is a hit that, you know, extra shocks is a problem because it takes a lot of GBE anyway. But his approach was extremely creative and I, I really want to showcase this. Um, actually, most of these hits, I can't say for Argus, uh, most of these hits that I'm going to show you here, um, there's something a little bit off about all of them. Now look at this microwaver. Watch where he flares up against the wall. This is a completely non-standard path. And he did this with the knowledge that this power cell right here was going to cause his Zookas to sort of lean to the left. And he pretty much like blows a kiss to this microwaver on the way by. Um, but loses, I mean, it never activated, and he didn't lose a single Zooka. He's perfectly safe, he's avoided a whole bunch of mines, and now he's going to get himself into the regular kill zone for a complex. A lot of smokes, but then again, smokes are still cheaper than a bunch of shocks, and with, you know, complex being so far from the shore as it is, uh, you can't... Uh, you can't necessarily afford to get your shocks back here and then shock the micro on the way by and so on. There's always that one girl who decided, you know, she decided she would walk out of smoke and down around, not just around, um, just completely around this boom cannon to get wherever she was trying to stand. So he lost delay a little bit, otherwise this hit would have been even better looking. As it was, it wasn't bad looking. He's crushing that core. He's gonna have one more shock, which he puts 
So that was a total of three he had available at the core, which he put on the shock launcher. It fires faster than the rockets do, and it will kill you faster than the rockets will. So that was uh, also a very good situational awareness. And yeah, that path, right? So wall flare, which wall flares are good. They help your girls uh, walk skinny, I guess. The single file lines, they're the best for getting single file lines and things like that. But he used the wall flare to just like pull his girls to the side of that power cell to make sure that they stayed away from the microwaver. And I, that was ingenious. I loved it. Um, nothing good happened yesterday. Fran on Titan? I, I should watch this, but there's actually a Fran hit that's not a 298. I have a quick look at this just to... Oh yeah, this was disgusting. But, um, pretty simple approach on this one. Instead of going from the left-hand side where you might have to worry about this grappler and maybe you've got... Of course, never fails. Um, and I have Do Not Disturb on, but still, it, like, that messenger seems to override that. Um, his approach to this was really very simple. He just, instead of going to the right-hand side, he's going to use bullet and he's going to do, uh, wrap this machine gun, but from the left-hand side. Um which makes your life a whole lot easier here. It was a beautiful hit, but it's actually not as creative as another hit of his that I'm going to show you. Um, how about now? If I can find it. Fran, Dioxin. Fran. Orbital, right? I'm sorry, lost it for a second there. 1024, did we look at that? Yes, 993, so I guess it had to be here, this conveyor. So, conveyor. I hate conveyor. This is only a 119, and I would not have wanted to hit this. If I had hit this, and I put it in the note, I would have gone the lazy man's way, which is you just walk up and around and to the back of the base. You can stop smoking somewhere over in this corner. Um, and then you come back across. This was pretty low health, so it's not too hard to bar it. So then you come back across the top, and you free snipe. And that's so easy, and that's great, because this base is always messy, and I hate it so much almost always a hot beach, almost always just tons and tons and tons of shocks. He handles it a different way. I don't... I mean, I know someone has done it before. I don't know that I've seen this play before, but uh, yeah, he wasn't having the lazy man's way, the way that I would have gone. You know, he's got his own ideas here, but just watch. So, that extra flare at the shore because you got to try to get your zookas gathered here. That's the other thing. There's nothing for the zookas to... Uh, target and so they will start walking off in search of a target so there's no anchor on the shore for your troops that's annoying too one of the many reasons that i hate this base and this play right here this is well worth watching so that's why we're here 298s notwithstanding that was a beautiful solo but that was a pretty standard hit this is not this is cool perfect positioning for bullet he's got nice separation with his girls he's got a critter coming out early on the right hand side that's just in case he misses this mortar which in fact he did he's also had to shock this rocket launcher and then he came back with another shock on that mortar as well but even the critter was again the situational awareness was fantastic so that critter was well placed and he's got a lot of girls there this is low health what's that nine hundred thousand i think so you know it was going to die and it was going to die quickly he just had to get there and he did beautiful beautiful hit um who do we have left? We have Dot and we have Argus. Argus, I'm gonna actually look quickly at one hit, which I apologize for, but this was this hit from yesterday. I usually don't show anyone's fails but my own. There's nothing wrong with this hit. It's just an example of um, crappy layout and the kinds of choices that you have to make when you're doing this five-man thing. So, very standard ribbon cable. It's a 190, which is about as big as they ever get. I think I've, they might get up to 226, but boy, that's a lot of power cells back there. The defense has almost never changed. It just it add more and more power cells. That seems like it'd be a good thing on the face of it, but actually it can be a problem because the power cells distract your troops. I had put in the note that we should go left. He's chosen to go right. The reason he's chosen to go right is that there's this floddy over here, and those are bad. They blow up you're gonna have to kill it. It's going to blow up and it's going to kill um, some of your Zookas. And so, I mean, I suggested maybe bringing some bombardiers along 
and marking it, but still, it's going to blow up. I think he was just trying to avoid, Argus was, I think he was just trying to avoid the Flotsam Cannon and having to deal with that. But, it's like, this approach is it's very, very difficult to get a solo because now you've got so many things between you and the core. He's going to bard these guys. They're going to die pretty quickly. Um, he's got tons and tons of GBE to do everything that he wants, but the trouble is you have to get there and you have to be able to clear and so on. Um, just the right-hand side approach usually doesn't work. I'm not saying it can't, but it usually doesn't. But the left-hand side approach, you've got that to deal with, so I understand the decision. Anyway, like, that's what I mean is when I say that some of these layouts are just, you know, garbage and uh, you just make the best of it. With that said, uh, he had a very nice axiom, which I will show in full uh, to make up for the fact that I just showed a fail. Sorry, Argus. So this was a nice clean axiom. It's the 119, so it's low health again, uh, right around a million. But, um, some extra junky stuff up there. You could do it with three shocks. I think he goes with four, um, just to be on the safe side. And, uh, again, it's, if you get your troops there, you will win. Same as, uh, uh, with Conveyor just now. You get your troops there, you will win, but you have to get there. So, hmm. This is actually, that's a slightly different flare point, and, um, this being a 119, Cells keep coming up. Interesting. Anyway, there are usually a bunch of cells here and a bunch of defenses, and the cells help guide your troops on the walk. So he just peaked a little bit, but those cells are not there, so it's actually a little less predictable uh, where your troops are going to go because the cells usually help guide them. Um, it's weird. It's very weird. Sometimes we have too many cells, and sometimes we have too few. And, uh, yeah, so Crush is that. I think he only lost, like, five Zookas on that walk. But, um, there are a lot of different things. So here, we, in the, the pathing was a question. This is what I meant about, you know, Sven's hit. The pathing worked out so well. But it's the little things. It really is the, the little things that make a huge difference. And, um, who do we have left? I think we have Dot What. And Dot What I wanted to show... Not that one. Mm, not that one. There's a Javanese somewhere. There it was. Uh, and again, with the pathing. So, kind of a theme here. Um, not, you know, the ugliest Javanese in the world, but for some reason, whatever it was, maybe the lack of mines, he decides that he wants to go to the left-hand side here. Uh, also, possibly just to make his life easier when it comes to the shocks but that's going to require a very different path from the one that you're accustomed to, and so that changes things. That makes them much less predictable. So, um, yeah, actually, I think for every single one of these, like, every single one of these hits that I'm showing you, something is different or something is off, and, you know, we've had to be a little bit creative about it. It sounds easier, I think, than it, than it is sometimes. Um, because, you know, things just don't always work out, case in point. <laughs> Things just don't always work out the way that you think they're going to. Um, so, completely different walk over here, and it uh, seems like he's got a handle on it now. Again, with the, the defenses there, they actually help guide your troops, so once he got, it was actually this, this part of the world where he ran into trouble, where there's absolutely nothing in his path, but then again, that also, you know, that also means that there's nothing to guide your troops on their walk. So, it sounds like a good thing, but it's not necessarily a good thing. Anyway, regardless, couple, couple or three shocks here. I think he just ignored the blaster. If I wanna, if I remember this hit, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just ignored the blaster. Screw it. Who cares? Um, 1.3, 1.5, and a bit of change million on this, uh, on this Javanese. And uh, I mean, you know, I mean, there were a little bit of peakage on the walk, but uh, all in all, he killed that pretty easily. He's got a bunch of extra GBE there. That was four med kits and a smoke. So, you know, I, I always like to show off that way, so I guess he's getting in on that action as well. Anyway, array of interesting hits at various difficulty levels, but um, a lot of improvisation there, which eh, and in this case, I mean, for the most part, it worked out, so that's a good thing. Anyway, so today is looking like a good day. We killed the two big bases. Rogue wasn't worth bothering with because we get more points from Excel and Ballast. So if we if we take care of our business on these bases today, we're looking at another 
solid probably a thousand point day I want to say or thereabouts so pretty pretty normal there pretty normal there so as long as we take care of business here we're looking at yet another great day which once again should drop us up into that uh, 12 ish 11 12 ish area of the world I'm not gonna do the math on it now but you know um, again so not not all perfect like I said, I'm a tiny tiny stumble yesterday but uh, still new force point high for this task force which again this is an old task force out of the triangle nine family of task forces so uh, that says something for the guys who are here right now so congrats to everybody here because again I mean once was the number two task force in the world but uh, as far as the force points we we own that this these guys here so anyway um, I get a run uh, I, because actually I had, didn't have the time to make the first video when I made it and I didn't have the time to make this second video now that I'm making it and I, there were things that I was supposed to be doing uh, 23 minutes ago and I am not apparently so I guess those are going to get punted on for today anyway like the video thumbs up all of that stuff and I will catch you guys later take care